is up you guys welcome back to another video we're going to discuss if 1000 cc or more motorcycles are they too much for the street let's get into it so i want to start off while we're warming the bike up here with just saying that my belief is that these bikes do have a place on the roads even if there are the purists out there that say that they have no place so my viewpoint is always more power equals more fun, but I know that doesn't resonate with a lot of people because there's a lot of people that track, you know, R6s and, and stuff that can be a weapon on the track. But for me, I kind of want the best of both worlds. I want something that can handle, but I also want something with a ton of power. And with this thing, it's able to deliver both of those. Now, I'll be the first one to say that if I went to a track day, I'm sure I would be passed by people on R6s, you know, 636s, whatever, with more experience because I just don't have that experience. I'm not that great at it. However, there's just something about the allure of having a bike with the capabilities of this. You know, it's not the track day bros. It's the ability to have a, a dual nature. So with this one specifically, this motorcycle, I am putzing right now at 15, 16 miles an hour. No problem whatsoever. You can do it on a lower CC bike, of course, but I just don't necessarily see the point of all of these people that are, they're almost snobby with it. People are almost like, yeah, bro, I could beat you with my R6 or my FZ09 on the track, whatever. You, hey, cool, you go do that. I just like having a lot more character than just the typical track day, whatever. You know, this thing is a weapon everywhere. And in the proper hands, it would most definitely smoke most bikes around the track. Am I the proper person to do that? <laughs> Probably not. But it can definitely do things like that. My next point, I am still not on the train of the fact that you should get a leader bike as your first bike. I do not think that's a good idea, regardless of the nannies and everything that new bikes have. Not smart. Don't do that. You're going to get carried away. You're going to have the power at your disposal, and you're going to potentially do bad things. However, on that subject, though, with the ability to have these bikes, they also, the newer ones, have a ton of electronics in them. And with these electronics, you can really limit the power. And they do a great job at, at toning it down. I can turn this bike into, uh, what is it, street mode. And it has, like, it, my friend's FZ09 would beat it. So it, it has settings, you know, the traction control, the everything, that it can turn down if it wants to. That's a little sketchy. My mount for my uh, 360 cam is not that strong, apparently. Almost lost you guys. All right, not doing that again. All right, so cruising around. Cruising around is great for this mount. <laughs> not so great if I want to actually get on it. Okay, lesson learned. Not doing that again. You can really neuter these bikes down to a point where people can feel comfortable riding around day to day and not really have the potential to loop it or get into too much trouble. There's just something about excess that's fun. Everybody seeks it out. If we limited motorcycles to less than a thousand cc's, there, in my opinion, wouldn't be much excitement because every bike would be around the same thing, just not very interesting. Like, yes, you could do different engine layouts, any of that stuff, but realistically, there's only so many options. Whereas with not limiting the CCs, you have, I mean, granted, I don't really like the look of them, but you have Hayabusa's, you have the ZX-14's, you have arguably the fastest bikes in the world are the big bikes, which, again, 
ego bikes, I get it, but there's something about not having a cap on the power or the CC of the bike that allows for the freedom of creativity to flow for a lot of these manufacturers. I mean, specifically, look at the, uh, uh, granted, not a great example because it's a thousand CC, but look at the H2 and the ZH2. Those bikes have a supercharger on them. They make north of 200 horsepower. Well, ZH2 is right at 200, but they make north of 200 horsepower. The H2R is like over 300 horsepower. And I, I don't know. I just feel without those sort of crazy ego bikes, it just wouldn't be as exciting. Like, of course, the ZH2 can't handle very well, and neither does the H2. But they're not made for that. They're made for going really fast in straight lines and on the highway and just having fun. There's different versions of fun for people. And I, I think a lot of the track day bros kind of forget that. You know, you can judge people all you want on their views on motorcycles. You know, I'm judging people right now um, on their views. But I just think the world would be a better place if everybody just didn't have a problem with whatever people want. Hey, if people want 1,390 cc bikes, I know the new Super Duke is like 1,350 or whatever, but regardless, if people want that large of a bike, they want a, you know, ZX14, 1,400 cc motorcycle, they can do that. It's going to handle like a pig, but it's going to go like stink. So why can't you get someone to do that? Like, why not let people express themselves through their bikes? Like this one. I was just saying on my last video, um, when we were making it with Kevin, his Aprilia Tuono is a very precise machine. It's extremely good at cornering, at cruising. It's extremely smooth. This bike, also good at cruising, also good at cornering, but man, this has a totally different disposition than the Tuono does. This is a pure muscle bike, and when I say that, I, I mean both in looks, in sound, and in power. You know, this bike, it's 1,103 cc's of raw power. I mean, you figure it's a 1.1 liter engine that makes 208 horsepower and revs to almost 15,000, well, 15,000 RPM when you get to sixth gear, but say 14.5. It screams, and the profiles on the engines are totally different. His is a 65-degree V4. Sounds completely different. Super smooth. Mine is a 90-degree V4, with the firing motor a little different than his as well. And man, does that make a difference for how the bike responds to throttle and RPM. His is extremely linear, which again, very precise and positive in a way of how the bike communicates but you get a lack of uh, feeling of speed even though you are going really fast we raced these and they were almost identical but with this you get this surge of power at like 10,000 rpm and it screams to 14 and there's just a totally different vibe to it I love the segment above 1,000 cc's. I love the hyper nakeds. I love the everything. I'm mean, again, I'm not not the biggest fan of the Hayabusa or the uh, ZX14, but the Tuono V4, the Super Duke, now the Super Duke 1390, the ZH2, the Street Fighter V4, even like the MT10, just very different motorcycles that aren't necessarily like yeah, okay. They're not going to be track weapons. I mean, the MT-10 could be if you set up the suspension right, but it's it's meant to be a, a hooligan bike. And so is this to a point. I mean, yes, this wins all the track tests for the Hyper Nakeds, and it's extremely potent. But to the average person that's riding this thing around like me, am I going to do a track day eventually? Oh, I hope so. That would be awesome. However, I don't really have the time right now, so... For the ability to, for me to go out and rip this thing on the highway and back roads and for it to be kind of the best of both worlds in both of those environments, that's why I love this thing.
right, sorry, I had to stop to uh, change camera positions so that it doesn't fall again. I'm still getting used to my new camera, so please bear with me on the footage. Might not be the best. So, all thousand cc's are not necessary. They are fun, and I think that's why they belong on our roads. Because that's the whole point of motorcycling. Am I right? It's excess. It's the ability to express yourself through these two-wheeled machines. I mean, you have Triumph. They have a Rocket 3 that now has a 2.5 liter inline 3, making a butt ton of torque. Not, I mean, it still makes a decent amount of horsepower, but a butt ton of torque. Like, that is awesome. Like, if people want to do that, let them. Who cares? People want to buy a bike like that. It seems completely pointless, but who cares? Let them do it. Now, if you have an ego that goes along with it, okay, that could be a problem. But, for the most part, there's zero issue with buying a large motorcycle as long as you're experienced. Again, disclaimer, I do not advise buying one of these bikes as your first one. But now we get into beginner bikes. So, okay, you say 1,000cc bikes are fun, they're necessary because they're fun. Got it. What about you guys that maybe don't have experience but want to get into riding? What should you jump on for your first bike? Do I think you should jump on a, a CV300 with like 30 horsepower? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because if you're like me, you get sick of it real quick. You want something that you can move up from and enjoy for at least a year. For me, I was jumping motorcycles for quite a few years. Each year I'd get a new one sort of thing, so. But in my opinion, I think like an FC6, something like a 600cc bike in line 4 is perfect. They're super tame at low RPMs. They have pretty much no torque down low, so you can't really get in much trouble with them. But then up top, if you want to take advantage of the power, and they sound great too, you can do that. So, in my opinion, the 5 to 600 cc range is perfect for a beginner. And if you want to go a little above that, you might want to look into like an FC07. But again, those are to the point where it's a little iffy on your experience. Because the newer ones, I think they have wheelie control and stuff, which is good. Because then you could do like an FC07, FC09 but you don't want to get something that's too much for you and then uh, potentially loop it or uh, crash it due to inexperience. So that little range of uh, motorcycles I think is, is perfect for someone who's looking to get into it and learn the basics while also not limiting themselves for the next couple months. Because I know for me, if I got a, a CV300, even a CV500, I think I would be pretty over it in a few months if not a month but again everybody's built different you might be perfectly happy with it i mean there's another perk to riding lower cc motorcycles is the fuel mileage is great on these uh, my friend's tuono was getting 28 miles per gallon this bike is around there i think it's around 27 28 miles per gallon depending on how hard i'm riding it which average riding it's normally around like 27 28 so on the smaller bikes like fc07 even the fc09 i know kevin was getting 40 miles per gallon average on his fc09 whether he was really beating on it or cruising so that could be a, a great perk for people looking to commute to work as well but just know if you go to thousand cc bikes your wallet's not just going to hurt from buying the motorcycle it's also going to hurt at the pump but again, with how small these tanks are, I don't see that as a huge deterrent for most people. Hope you guys are enjoying my little spiel so far. If you disagree with me, be sure to leave a comment. Again, if you're new here, welcome. Thanks for joining. Hit that subscribe button so you can get into more of the content coming up this summer. we got some exciting things planned. There's just something about the Street Fighter that I cannot get over with how 
perfect it is for me in every regard. And I, I am not dissing any other motorcycles. Again, I'm, I, I don't think I have any ego with that because I see the, the benefits of each motorcycle in their own regard. Um, maybe not Harleys, but hey, whatever, to each their own. Um, but when I got on Kevin's Tuono, I'll tell you, it, it was different. I know the seating position is different, stuff like that. It makes sense why it would be different, but man, it was, I can't describe it. It was different in a way that I, I don't know if I would actually like. Whereas with this, it's like, it's pretty much got everything I love. It's got the looks, it's got the power to back it up, it's got the handling to back it up. Regardless of my skill in the corners or being able to wheelie it or whatever, it's got every single thing that I love about a motorcycle packed into one. So I don't ever see myself getting rid of this motorcycle, ever. Will I add to my collection? Absolutely. Actually, that was one of my things. If uh, we're able to grow the channel enough, I think my, I might have my eyes set on a uh, ZH2 because I feel like I could do a great job with modding that, making that a whole build series, and then making that, that would be an ego bike for sure. That would be something that there's really no point of riding it other than either cruising somewhere because it has cruise control, which this doesn't have for some reason, or just laying smackdowns on the highway to people because that engine is so potent with the littlest amount of mods. But right now we're gonna go fill up because like I said, these bikes are thirsty and they got a drink. The sun is gorgeous today. Doo -doo. Doo. Always get 93. on this bike are phenomenal. My apologies if the mic's a little off too. I just got a new helmet, so fitting the mic in this is a little, a little funky. So I'm trying a lot of new stuff uh, this season, so bear with me. So I guess what I'm alluding to with this video is ride your own ride. Don't worry about what other people are riding. If someone has a bigger bike, let them have the bigger bike. Who cares? If you have that big of an ego to where you think you need to prove yourself on a smaller bike when you verse someone on a bigger bike, why? Unless you're at a track day and someone with a bigger bike is making fun of you or making comments toward you, there's no reason for anybody to shame anybody for getting a big bike. The only, only exception, like I mentioned, is if you get it strictly for like an ego bike as a beginner. Do not do not do that. That's how people get in trouble. That's how people get hurt. Just don't do it. I will tell you, this helmet is a lot better than my last one. I went from an Icon Air Flight to a Scorpion XO R1 Air Carbon. And one, the looks are sick on the Carbon. But two, the quietness of this helmet compared to the Air Flight is insane. And don't get me wrong, I love the look of the Air Flight. But man, it had a lot of wind noise. The face shield looks really cool, but my GoPro mounted to the face shield. So whenever I would go to pull the face shield up, I would need to disconnect my mic. I would have, it was a whole thing. Whereas this one, I could just pop up the face shield, no problem. So there's some big differences that make a big deal. I hope you guys are enjoying the new videos I'm coming out with. I hope you enjoyed this topic again. Put some comments below with videos you'd like to see me talk about some more and maybe get my opinion on. 
Also, just so everybody knows, if you're beginning to ride, like I said, with those smaller CC bikes, whatever, it's not how loud your motorcycle is, it's the wind noise. Wear earplugs, just wear earplugs, save your hearing. Don't be a person that just rides without them, because I made that mistake for the first like year or two of riding, and uh, who knows what hearing damage it gave me. Oh my gosh, this thing, the air is like a little cooler, it's 50 degrees, so it's spicy today. Was not expecting it to be that spicy. Ooh, watch out for that. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate all the support. Be sure to check out my channel for some more videos if you like what you see. You guys have a great day.